Now let's take up here question number 33. It states that solution of the equation 1 plus 4 plus 7 so on till x is equal to 925 is out of these four options. So basically you need to obtain the value of x. That will be the solution for this given equation. You can observe in the left hand side we have terms like 1, 4, 7 and this definitely forms an arithmetic progression. That means the terms on left hand side represent some of the n terms of an AP where the last term is x, first term is 1 and common difference is clearly visible that is 4 minus 1, 3. So here very first let's consider, let's consider that nth term of this arithmetic progression is x. If nth term of this arithmetic progression is x where first term is a that is 1 and common difference is d, it can be obtained using this formula a plus n minus 1 d. So I could definitely write here that x is equal to 1 plus here you have 3 into n minus 1 where it simplifies to give you the value of x equal to 3n minus 2. Now if you know the value of n, the number of terms present on the left hand side that will help you out to get the value of x that is solution of this given equation. So you can clearly see the right hand side represents 925 that represents sum of n terms of an AP. So as we are considering n terms there using the formula of sum of n terms of an AP Sn is here 925. So if you apply this formula you get here n upon 2 into a plus l first term plus last term that is equal to 925. So here we are considering number of terms is n first term is here 1 and last term is x which is obtained as 3n minus 2 this is equal to 925. When you simplify this equation you generate here a quadratic equation which will be equal to 3n square minus n minus 1850 equal to 0. This is obtained when 2 is transposed to the other side. Now in this case we need to factorize this and obtain the required value of n. Very first you can see I have here 3 and 1850. When you factorize it you are able to split the middle term as minus 75n plus 74n and you can clearly see it could be easily factorized now. You can take 3 common from the first two terms here in this step on taking 3 n common I get here n minus 25 while here 74 can be taken common which results here n minus 25. So it results here two factors one is n minus 25 the other one is 3 n plus 74. You can equate each factor to 0 resulting the value of n. So here I get n is equal to 25 on equating this factor to 0 it results n is equal to minus 74 upon 3 which is not possible because here n represents number of terms of this arithmetic progression it cannot be negative and it cannot be in terms of fraction. So n is not equal to minus 74 upon 3 but n is equal to 25. Now we have obtained the value of n that will definitely help you out to get the value of x. So in this case we need to obtain the solution where x is 3n minus 2. On substituting here n as 25, I get here 3 into 25, 75 minus 2, 73 as the value of x. So this is the required solution for this equation. So out of the four options provided to us, now you can clearly see the solution of this given equation is 73 which is present here in option number A. So you can definitely mark the required answer for this question as option A. I hope it is clear to you. Let's take up our next question. Here we have our next question, question number 34. It states that an observer standing at the top of a tower find that the angle of elevation of a red bulb on the top of a lighthouse of height capital H is alpha. Further, he finds the angle of depression of reflection of the bulb in the ocean is beta. Therefore, height of the tower is out of these options. So, very first we need to draw the diagram on basis of this condition. So, I am considering here you have the lighthouse and here you have the tower. So, very first let us take up that in this case we are talking about 
this lighthouse. So, this is the lighthouse and this is the reflection of the lighthouse in the ocean. So, now in this case firstly you are taking the angle of elevation of top of the lighthouse from this tower where I am marking this tower as AB. So, this is the tower AB and this is the lighthouse CD where I am taking height of this tower B small h and height of the lighthouse B capital H. So, it is quite obvious that here the reflection will be forming at the same distance at this level because here water acts as a plane mirror. So, if water acts as a plane mirror this is H this will be also at H. So, taking that case into consideration next it is stated in this question that from the top of this tower that is from point A you are taking angle of elevation of top of this bulb that is red bulb on the top of lighthouse and it is found to be equal to here when you take angle of elevation it is found to be equal to alpha. So, here we have angle of elevation equal to alpha. Now, this is H this will be also H. So, this remaining portion here if I name this as point E this will be equal to capital H minus small h. Further I am considering here this point as F. Next you take angle of depression of the same red bulb in the ocean in its image from the same point on the top of the tower. You obtain that this angle of depression in this case is equal to beta. So, here we get the angle of depression as beta. So, if I consider that this A is equal to x what will be the length of E f? You can see this is h here A b is small h. So, d e will be also equal to small h. So, this is capital H plus small h as the total length of E f. You can definitely mark here that E f is here measuring the length which is equal to capital H plus small h. Now, the diagram is clear to you. Let us consider the triangle AEC. Now, in triangle AEC you can see this angle is alpha. For this angle alpha CE is the perpendicular and base is AE. So, I can definitely apply tangent of angle alpha here. So, now in this case further if I apply tan alpha in triangle AEC tan alpha is equal to perpendicular upon base where perpendicular is equal to capital H minus small h and base is x. Through this you will get the value of x equal to capital H minus small h upon tan alpha. Let this be equation number 1. In similar manner if I consider your triangle AEF for angle beta what is the perpendicular? For this angle beta you can observe the perpendicular will be clearly in this case you can see that the perpendicular will be clearly equal to E f. E to f is measured as D f plus D e that is capital H plus small h and for angle beta base will be same A that is considered as x. So, let us take that into consideration next. Further you can write in triangle, in triangle A e f if you consider tan beta that is again perpendicular upon base this is equal to capital H plus small h upon we have the value A e upon we have the value A e that is x. Through this also you will get that x is equal to capital H plus small h upon tan beta. Let this be equation number 2. So, we have equation number 1 and equation number 2 in both of these you are obtaining value of x. x is same in both these cases. So, let us equate these two equations as left hand side is equal right hand side will be also equal. So, I could write here from equation 1 and 2 from equation 1 and 2 here we get that capital H minus small h upon tan alpha is equal to capital H plus small h upon tan beta. Now, in this case you are being asked about height of the tower which is represented as small h height of the lighthouse is already given as capital H. So, when you simplify this equation you will get here small h is equal to capital H into tan beta minus tan alpha whole by you have tan beta 
plus tan alpha. So, you can easily simplify this to get the required height of the tower which is in terms of capital H and alpha and beta. So, let us get back to the options provided in this question. So, as per the given options you can clearly see the correct answer is found here in option number A which is capital H into tan beta minus tan alpha whole by tan beta plus tan alpha. So, you can definitely mark here the required answer for this question is option A. You can write here the required answer is here option A for question number 34. I hope it is clear. Let us take up our next question. Here we have question number 35. It states that the sum of the roots of this given equation which is 1 upon x plus a plus 1 upon x plus b equal to 1 upon c is 0. The product of the roots is out of these options. So, here we are talking about this quadratic equation which is right now not in quadratic form. You need to simplify this equation and represent firstly in quadratic form. So, very first when we observe this given equation it is 1 upon x plus a plus 1 upon x plus b equal to 1 upon c. Now, let us simplify this by taking LCM. When you take your LCM this results 2x plus a plus b whole upon you have x into x x square plus you have a plus b into x plus a b equal to 1 upon c that is obtained. Now, in the next step when you further simplify it you get here the required quadratic equation which is x square plus a plus b minus 2 c x next you have plus a b minus b c minus a c equal to 0. Now, this is the quadratic equation and here it has been stated in this question that sum of the roots here is 0. How do you obtain sum of the roots? Sum of the roots is given by minus b by a that is minus of coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square and what is the coefficient of x in this case a plus b minus 2 c. So, here in this question sum of roots is equal to 0 due to that we have minus of a plus b minus 2 c equal to 0. On simplifying this it results here the value of c equal to a plus b upon 2 right. Next you need to obtain the product of roots. So, let us consider the formula of product of roots. How do you get the product of roots? Product of roots is obtained as c by a that is constant term upon coefficient of x square. So, here the constant term is a b minus b c minus a c and the coefficient of x square is 1 itself. Now, here in these two terms c is common. So, I can take here c common and on taking c common I get here a plus b and in place of c I can substitute back this value that is a plus b upon 2. So, which clearly gives me here a plus b whole square upon 2 on taking further LCM and simplifying it. It is going to give here the value equal to minus 1 upon 2 a square plus b square. So, here you get the required product of the roots that is minus a square plus b square whole by 2. I hope it is clear to you. So, out of the given options provided to us in this question you can clearly see the product of the roots is given by option number c that is minus of 1 upon 2 into a square plus b square. So, you can definitely mark your answer as option c for question number 35. I hope it is clear. Let us take up our next question.